Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, as well as the ones to come afterwards, we're going to talk about the buoyancy force. Now, we've mentioned the buoyancy force before in some of our videos, but we're going to do a special series on some of the special cases that we may encounter. For example, if we have an object that actually is floating, doesn't sink to the bottom, and we want to figure out what percentage or what fraction of the object will be below the surface and what fraction will be above the surface, we have some special techniques in order to figure out how to do that. And so in this case, since we're looking for what is x equal to, x being the fraction of the object being submerged below the surface, how will we go about figuring that out? Well, first of all, we need to understand that if the density of an object is less than the density of the liquid, then the object will float. Like ice, wood typically will float in the water with a small portion of it above the surface and some portion below the surface. We still keep the same definition to figure out how to do this by saying the buoyancy force, and I'll write the buoyancy force as BF, makes it easier than to write it out like that. The buoyancy force is equal by definition to the weight of the displaced liquid. So in this case, the displaced liquid is probably water, but we can simply generalize it by saying the displaced liquid. And of course, we can also write the weight as being the mass times acceleration due to gravity. And we, since we have the definition of the density being equal to the mass divided by the volume, we could also write the mass as simply being the product of the density times the volume. So this can be written as the density times the volume times g, where the density is going to be the density of the liquid, and the volume is going to be equal to the portion, the portion that is submerged below the liquid. So portion submerged. What that means now is that we're going to have a force pushing up. I'm looking for a different color here. So we're going to have a force pushing up against the object. This is going to be the buoyancy force. And then we're going to have the weight of the object pushing down, or at least pushing the object into the liquid. And when the two equalize, that's when the object will stop going down. If the buoyancy is greater, then the object will go up. If the mg is greater, the object will go down. And eventually, it will find its equilibrium point. At that point, the object will be floating. We can also say, because of this, that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the object. So in this case, when an object floats, and of course we can only say this when the object is floating, because if the object doesn't float and it sinks to the bottom, the buoyancy force is going to be less than the weight of the object. But in the case that the object is floating, we can also say that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the object, which is equal to m times g. And of course, we can do the same thing as we did for the liquid. The mass can be written as the density times the volume times g, where in this case, this here is going to be the, the density of the object, as opposed to over here, where this is the density of the liquid, and the volume is going to be the volume of the object. Now what we can do is set those two equal to one another. Now we have to be careful that we use the right subscript so we can keep them separate. So we can say that the buoyancy force which is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, and maybe I'll write it like this, the weight of the displaced liquid is equal to the weight of the object. And the weight of the displaced liquid can be written as this, the density of the liquid, and I'll go density sub L for L for liquid, times the volume of the displaced liquid. So again, I'll say volume sub L, that means the volume of the displaced liquid, the portion of the object that's submerged, times g is equal to the weight of the object, which can be written as the density of the object, times the volume of the object, times g. And that's how we can keep the two separate. Right away, we realize that g can be canceled out on both sides of the equation. And then I can substitute for each of these volumes what those volumes are equal to. The volume of the displaced liquid is this region right here. Assuming that the cross-sectional area as looking from the top is L by L, so that would be a square object to make things easier, we can say this is the density of the liquid, times L squared times X. X would be the portion in the vertical direction that is below the surface. 
h being the total height or thickness of the object, y being the portion being above the, above the surface or above the liquid. And this is equal to the density of the object times the volume of the object. In this case, that would be L square h. And of course, we already canceled out the g's. Now we can see that on both sides of the equation, I can cancel out an L squared. And then if I want to solve this for x, I can say that x is equal to the height or the thickness of the object times the ratio of the density of the object divided by the density of the liquid. And let's put a box around that so you can see that. So that's how we find the portion that is submerged. It is simply the height or the thickness of the object times the ratio of the density of the object divided by the density of the liquid. Remember that when it floats, this is smaller than this, so this fraction is less than 1, and so x is only a fraction of h, a fraction that's smaller than 1. We can also write it as a ratio. We can also say that the ratio of x to h is equal to the ratio of the density of the object divided by the density of the liquid. And so that's another good way of expressing how much of the object will be below the surface as compared to the whole thickness of the object. And that's how we calculate the portion of an object that's submerged below the surface if the density of the object is less than the density of the liquid. And that's how it's done.